All right. Fallout 1 review. This is going to be a pretty short one, I'll be honest. But, I don't know. If you haven't watched one of these in the past, this is not going to be very serious. It's not going to be very well organized. And it's just not going to be very edited. It's probably just going to be a straight video of me talking what I thought of the game, what I liked, what I didn't like. And for Fallout 1, honestly, there there's not really a ton to talk about. I feel like the the biggest thing to talk about is the fact that I played this with the Fallout 1 <coughs> sorry the Fallout 1 in 2 mod and that was the only way this game <laughs> was playable for me. I tried to play it um I tried to just raw dog the game, but uh I could not you gross I couldn't get it to load because it kept saying like the drivers were incompatible or wrong drivers because obviously this game was made in like the 90s before Windows was the mainstream thing so it, it wasn't made for this platform. Oh shit. Let me first explain what's happening. So I did explore the entire map. I will show you guys the map in a minute but what I wanted to do is I wanted to come here to Necropolis where um this is where set and all those ghouls were but in in the end game that i got it said that after we beat the super mutants they fled west <laughs> had to do the never eat soggy waffles so they fled west and in doing so they passed through necropolis and they killed everybody here and i was like you know what i want to see if they actually changed anything about it and it looks like they did because there's a super mutant right here. But whatever, I'm gonna I'm gonna just fight these guys in the background. I'm gonna I'm gonna get into it. Like I said, this is not gonna be very serious. It's not gonna be super well done. And obviously, you can have your own opinions. You can think whatever you think about the game. You can think of whatever you want to think about what I think about the game. But this is this is it. One sec. Okay, cool. Sorry, I just <laughs> I had to make sure something. It's been a it's been a couple days since I've uh, recorded because it was Thanksgiving. And then right after Thanksgiving, I got sick, so that was very annoying. But we're back. We're good now. All right. So <laughs> I feel like right off the bat, I should say I loved this game. I had a great time playing it. I really like the the world because obviously I'm a huge fan of the Fallout series and if this is where it started I love the world and the lore. I like the way everything is set up like you know there's a nuclear war between like well there's a nuclear arms race in the world. America and China are going at it. America annexes Canada because China is attacking Alaska and we need to be <laughs> we need to be closer however they want to justify it. Is Super Mutant not gonna turn around? Oh he did. Oh he's called an invading Super Mutant too. Another little detail. So I I love the world building, that's out of the way, but I think the story is very well done. You're a vault dweller and your vault <laughs> Your vault, one of its key components, the water chip that produces your water, <laughs> is um is damaged, and you have to go. We have to like send somebody out into the wastes to find it. But you know, we just happen to be that guy. R.I.P. Set, not the goat by any means, but R.I.P. Set. <clears throat> so. Yeah, we head out into the waste. We start, you know, we're going to Vault 15, but we run into Shady Sands, and Shady Sands tells us about Junk Town and the hub. And then eventually, Vault 15 is a bust. So we go back to the Overseer, and he's like, Alright, you gotta keep looking, man. I don't know, that was our only lead. So you check out Junk Town and the hub, and that leads to the Necropolis and LA Boneyard, and you start hearing whispers of like the Brotherhood or. Maybe, I think, I think maybe you hear something about the super mutants. The main way you would hear about them from the hub is 
because everyone in town is talking about the missing caravans. And if you finally follow the missing caravan questline, then it leads to the Death Claw, which had a super mutant, and the super mutant, you get his transmission, and you finally have proof there are there are mutants out there, and they are attacking people for whatever reason. They're kidnapping them. And then, or another way, is if you came to Necropolis, you run into those first couple of super mutants, and you ask them the questions, and they tell you, or the super mutants in Necropolis can kidnap you and send you to the master at the, well, not the master, they send you to the lieutenant at the Mariposa, but... I genuinely do not know how you would get out of that situation. <laughs> like, there's no way you could have beaten all those super mutants. Like, when you're first going to the necropolis, that's when you get the water chip, dude. That's when you actually get the water chip. So I don't know how they expected you to, like, remedy that situation. I think the only way is to reload a save. Because once the lieutenant gets you, your options are be beaten to almost death and imprisoned or tell him where the vault is and if you tell him where the vault is the game ends you get the bad ending but if you, if you don't tell him he just beats you up and throws you in a cell and then you're sitting in a cell with no health none of your gear <laughs> and these super mutants do easily over a hundred damage at that point in the game when you have like such low armor this is the full map, by the way. I, You can see the path I walked all the way around this thing. But apparently these three slots at the bottom, there's no, there's no spots. Like this place, fake. There's a couple others like that where it looks like there could be a town, but there's not. It kind of sucks. Like all along the coast here, it looks like they could have put stuff. But nothing. But that's, that's another thing I like, honestly, is like the world building. Like... It is very empty, it is supposed to feel empty, and that's because the world was nuked. You are in <laughs> you are in a nuclear wasteland. People are barely surviving, they're scrounging for whatever they can get. There was only three supermans, we're just gonna walk around now, but <laughs> dude. So yeah, I love the story. I think it flows very well from starting off with you have this time limit to get the water chip so it gives you like a little sense of urgency but people were right it is plenty of time <laughs> like i don't know how you wouldn't get the water chip in time i literally don't know unless you just weren't paying attention to the story at all but no so i think it flows very well from the water chip storyline introducing the mutants and then you get the mutant storyline you have to deal with that introduces you to like all these allies all these npcs very nicely and so i think they did a great job with that something <laughs> something else i like is i think the voice acting is very well done obviously not every npc is voice acted but this is a very old game it's also very small well not small it's not like a huge game for the time though this was probably like <laughs> groundbreaking for like open world exploration games so i think it was great you've got some great voice actors like uh ron perlman there's a uh, keith david uh or keith davidson i always forget i can't really I can't think of any of the other voice actors off the top of my head, but I remember when I was watching the credits, I was kind of surprised by a couple of them. But yeah, I think the I think the voice acting is well done. I think the story is done. World building's great. Um, I do like like if you've played a Fallout game, you know that there's more than one option. There's always you can talk your way out, you can fight, or usually there's a third option. And I like that we have that even with the final boss in this game. When you get to the master, you can either, like, you can shoot him from down the hallway and never talk to him once. That's what I did to kill him. Or you can go up to him and you can talk to him. And if you have 
good enough skills and if you've done the exploration in the game you have proof that you can show him that his plan is flawed and he literally just acknowledges it he goes you're right oh my god so i think that was super awesome and then if you didn't want to do either of those you can use your other skills to sneak down to the basement kill the guards and you can just set off a nuke you don't even have to talk to the master you don't have to look at the master you can just blow him up spoilers but um i do i always love that in games when there's more than one option like i'm okay with a linear story i'm okay with it being a set path but obviously when they give you the option or if a game is set up to be like hey here's a bunch of things you can do i love when there actually are a bunch of things you can do instead of it's like you have choices and that's just fight occasionally you can talk but i think this game did a great job of that especially considering how early on it is i feel I think that's like the majority I guess I guess it does have a pretty good variety of weapons and I think the the perks are very unique like obviously you only get what one two three four you get six perks throughout the whole game so kind of wish you got more. oh sorry seven I should not have wasted a here and I should not have gotten, <laughs> I could have gotten way better stuff than that But, um, <laughs> I love, like, the setup. Because, obviously, you know, this is this is the baseline that all the Fallout games built off of. You have your special, which <laughs> is kind of just, like, an acronym in this game. But in later games, like, they build that out a little bit more with the vaults. But, no, I think there's a lot of good variety, a lot of good ways to use your skills. I love the exploration. I love this... Like, little dialogue down here, because sometimes you'll, like, click on something, and it'll... <laughs> like, it'll say something stupid, like, it'll be like, Oh, that's a nice chair, but, you know, we don't have time to be looking at chairs now. We gotta find the water chip. Or, you'll, like, see a guy, and it'll have good dialogue. I think they do a great job of... Even though, like, the, the sprites for these characters... Not sprites, the models... For these characters are somewhat basic they do a great job of describing them down here with this box just using the dialogue to really make your imagination fill in the gaps i think that's a <laughs> great thing that a game could have done to help overcome its limitations at the time so <laughs> i think it's a very well done game the i don't have a lot of complaints but I, I do have some. So, I mentioned this when I was playing, but my biggest complaint is when you walk up to an NPC and they have, like, six dialogue lines. Like, these are all unique. You could be like, oh, who are you? What is this place? What are you doing here? Blah, 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 blah. But then, like, you'll click one of them and then that like starts a quest or something and just completely cuts out the rest of them. You cannot, you can't talk to them ever again and get those dialogue options back. I think that's super lame. Like, I don't know if it was always intended, but the worst place for this was the cathedral because you would run into all those, all those NPCs with all that stuff and you'd click one thing and they'd be like, oh, go talk to uh, this guy. And then you try again, they'd be like, I told you to talk to this guy, why are you still talking to me? It's like, come on, dude. I just wanna, I just wanna have a conversation. I just wanna learn the lore. I wanna get the dialogue. I don't wanna, I don't wanna go straight there. If I did, I wouldn't be, <laughs> I wouldn't be me. Cause you, if you watch the series, you know how many times, like I reloaded a save just to get more dialogue out of it. The third, okay. But no so that's that's like it's not even like a major thing it's just it was annoying it's like come on dude i want to talk to the people if you're gonna make the options let me click on the options you know it's a, it's a simple thing the only other real complaint i would have is the number of random encounters is ridiculous at times like 
Like, I understand when you're going to the Mariposa, there's gonna be a ton of super mutants. Or when you're going to the Glow, there's gonna be a ton of... What are they called? A ton of mutant, regular mutants, like irradiated monsters, the floaters and the centaurs, but... It's like, dude, when I was going to the Glow, I've said it time and time again, but it took me three hours just because of random encounters. Literally just finish random encounter, go. Finish random encounter, go. Finish random encounter, explore cave, go. Like, there should be a limit. <clears throat> like, I think, I don't know, man. I think, like, three, more than three in one movement square was too much like i was i was in agony i was suffering um i th i think that's my major list of like good and bad like i said i'm not gonna have a ton for this game but i will say because of the fallout 1 and 2 mod it definitely added a bunch of quality of life things um oh, let's go brotherhood it had a ton of quality of life that made the game easier. Like, um, one thing I know is if you use a, if you use an item, like a stim pack, let's say, you would have to use it, go into your inventory, re-put it into your hand, use it. So, like, multi-use items, well, sorry, multiple single-use items would not just be a stack in your hand you'd have to one at a time one at a time dude like imagine in combat because it already takes like four ap to get um i love that animation it already takes four ap to get into your inventory and then you have to use two to use the stim pack and it's like this is ridiculous but there are definitely things I would have complained about if we didn't have the mod. Like, I believe... <clears throat> I've never played without the mod, but when they were listing things that it did... I believe if we didn't have the mod, you can't really trade gear with NPCs. I think, like, you literally have to steal from your companions to get stuff back. So, tons of quality of life. I would... Honestly, I wouldn't recommend playing it without Fallout 1 and 2 mod. I don't even know if you could because of the driver's issue. I tried to find ways around that, but I couldn't get it. Because most of the YouTube videos were like 10 years old and filmed on a potato. And I'm simple man, simple brain. But... Uh, cool. Bye bye Uh, okay. But no, I, I loved this game. Honestly, uh, with the mod, I think I would call this like a 10 out of 10 game. Because like I said, I don't care about really the mechanics or the graphics. I care about if it's fun and like it's obvious the people cared about the project that they were working on. Like if you look up this game... There's tons of cut content that they couldn't get to because they ran out of time. But this game was very fun. I enjoyed... <laughs> I'm not going to say every minute, but I enjoyed almost all of it. I guess, you know, 10 out of 10, 9.5 out of 10. One of those two because... Like, there's so much here. But, like, it's such a... It, it looks so simple, but, like, when you get into it, like, there's so much you can do... Like, just role-playing with the characters, with the world, with all that. Obviously, I got very attached to my, um, companions, uh, Katya, Ticho, Dogmeat, and Ian. But, <laughs> when I was exploring the world, I was like, I'm not doing all these random encounters. I just ran past the enemies. Like, combat would start, and I would just run to the nearest wall. But, um... I marked, <laughs> I marked when my allies died, so like, dude, Ian, Ian died instantly, like, the first random encounter we got was a gang of super mutants, and he got torn, he got crit for, like, 170, 
And then after that, I think Dogmeat was killed by raiders. And then Ticho, I believe, was also killed by raiders a bit later. I don't know how Kacha is the only one that survived. Because if you were watching the series, I believe Kacha had the least health. Ugh. Alright, so that's, that's like the biggest chunk of what I had to talk about. If I, if I could change one thing about this game, I think that maybe... Maybe I'm just greedy. I wish you could carry more, or that armor weighed less. Because you see how we have 175 carry weight. My armor is 100 pounds. Like, come on. Come on. The strength boost it gives me does not compensate for that. But I feel like that's all I really had to say about this game. I, I loved it. I had a great time with it. I... Maybe I could see myself playing this again to do like a evil playthrough. You know, you uh, you side with Gizmo, you side with the Great Cons, you join the the Skulls over in Junk Town. I think yeah, Junk Town. Like I could maybe see that being a very different playthrough, but I feel like by the I don't know, it just makes you feel bad to be mean in games. Maybe maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm. Maybe I'm too soft like that, but whatever. That's going to do it for the Fallout 1 review. Like I said, if you're going to play this, I recommend the Fallout 1 and 2 mod. I believe I linked it in the first episode of the series. I, I don't know. I don't know what I want to play next. I have so many games. Um, I guess I'll figure it out today, but I will see you guys in the next series. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you have a good one, and I hope I will see you next time. See you guys.